Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video we're going to be checking out one of the new features added to Elementor Pro and that's the ability to add in your own custom login pages. So we're going to take a look at how that works, how we can configure it and how we can make sure it's styled to fit in with the rest of the theme that we may be using. So let's check all that out right now. So I've created my new login page, I've named it and set everything up inside my theme. Next thing I want to do is just load in Elementor and we can start working with this new plugin add-on. So let's just edit with Elementor, let that load up and then we'll take a look at the new option. So if we scroll down on the left hand side we've got all our widgets available. You can see underneath the pro elements we've now got the option for login. So all we need to do is just simply drag that over and drop it onto our page and that automatically adds in a new login section. Now we can configure this in the same way that we do with most things by using the preferences and the options available in the left hand section. So let's go through those now, see what's available and how we can tweak the look of this and how we can set it up. So if we take a look on the left hand side underneath the content tab you can see we've got the option to specify the form field information. So we can specify whether we want to show the labels or not. You can see that'll streamline the, the login form. We can specify the input size. You can see we've got a range of different options in there. We can really go up to any kind of size that'll fit in with the design that we want to work with. Pretty simple and straightforward options. If we expand the button option out, you can see again, we've got some simple options in there, all are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. We can choose the login text and we can choose the size of the button. We can also then choose the alignment of the button based upon the device that's being used. So as with most things with Elementor, we've got this little icon that allows us to choose how different things are working based upon the device they're being viewed upon. So we can specify the alignment based upon the desktop, a tablet display, or a mobile display. So we can just choose those, whichever we think is going to work. If we go to additional options, you can see this is where the sort of meat and bones of this particular functionality comes in. So we can specify what we want to do with the form. So we can specify we want to redirect after the login. So once someone successfully logs in, what's the action we want to do after that? Do we want to redirect them to somewhere else? And we'll take a look at that in a moment. We've got the option then to enable or disable your lost your password option. So you can see by disabling that, that removes the option to choose the link to click to remember to uh, retrieve a lost password. You've got the rem remember me option and you've got the logged in message. So you can see we can choose what message is going to be displayed when there's a login. We can also specify custom labels. And if we do that, you can see we can go in and we can change what's written above either of these form fields, ensuring that we've got the option to actually display this information. So you can easily go through and choose exactly what's displayed in there. Let's just disable that for now. So the thing we want to look at is the redirect after login. And this is where we can kind of specify exactly what happens after a successful login. So if we click on there, you can see we've got the option to make sure that this goes through to a specified page. Now for this example, I'm going to keep it straightforward and simple. I've already got WooCommerce installed. So what I want to happen is I want them to go through to my account page. So to make that happen, all I need to do is put in the link to my website. And then for this example, we've got my account. And that's going to take us through to the account page. So once that's done, that now says, like I say, once there's a successful login, to redirect it to that particular page. But obviously you can use any page you want. You could set up a custom page on here and say, thank you very much for logging in. And then set that to go somewhere else, whatever you realistically want to do. Now it says, note, because of security reasons, you can only use your current domain here. So in other words, you can't have this jump off to another site, to another login section or another admin section. It has to be located on your own site. If we jump over to the style option, this is where we can start to control the look and feel of this particular section inside our site. And obviously with this, you could make this as simple or as complex as you want to. You can have this embedded into a part of a site design, or you can have a dedicated page in its own. You can put color backgrounds in, gradient backgrounds in, photograph backgrounds in, whatever you kind of want to do. I'm going to keep it fairly simple and straightforward. We're just going to apply some simple styles to this, and we can see how that works. So you can see we've got the option for the form, and the first thing we go in there is the row gap, so we can expand that out to get it exactly the way we want to look to make sure that all the spacings and everything look nice and neat and tidy. You've also got the option then for any of the links, what colors you want those to be. We can fine tune and tweak those. So you can see we've got the ordinary pop-up color picker on there, and we can also choose to style the links on hover. 
If we come to the label section, then we've got the option to specify again spacing. So you can see we can use this to control the amount of space between the label and the actual form field. And again, we can change the text color on this if we want to. We can enable that and we can go and choose any color we want. All very quick and easy. So let's just change that to a darker color so it stands a bit better. And if we want, we can use typography in there so we can go through and we can style this exactly how we want. And again, we've also got the option to specify how the text is working based upon the device that's being viewed upon. I'm not going to go into that. We've covered that in plenty of other videos and it's pretty self-explanatory to be honest. So I'll just disable that for now. We've then got the option for the form fields themselves. We can then Go in and, and sort of fine tune the color. Again, we've got the typography option. So if we want to make sure that this typographically fits in with the rest of our site design, we can do that very easily. We can choose a background color for any of our form elements. So you can see we can easily tweak this. It won't show up too well on here because we've obviously got this yellow highlight to specify. We've got a form element on there that's pre-filling pre it in because of uh, the, the browser that I'm using. We can again go in through and choose border colors, border radiuses, and so on. So we can fine tune and tweak this to our heart's content. And finally, we've got the option for the button, which we can then again go through and set up colors on hover, the normal state, add typography. So we can go and style that border radiuses and so much more. Again, they're all pretty self-explanatory. So you can style that up however you'd want to. And if we come down to advanced, then you can see we've got the option to apply any margins and padding. So for this example, let's go and add some padding in there so it sits away from the edge of the form element. We could animate this if we wanted to, to make it a bit more interesting. So we could say we want this to sort of fade down. So that'll sort of fade down into the screen itself if we wanted to do that. We've got the background and border. So what we're going to do is let's just go and put a bit of color into that. So let's just say we want to specify some kind of color in there. Let's go and set that to be... A very pale gray for example we don't want to put an image but if we wanted to we could just add that in there we we'll put a border in we put a solid border in there of one pixel and again we're going to come down and choose a different color for this we've got something a little darker around the edges that's pretty good all simple stuff border radius let's put a six pixel border radius so we can have it nice and neat have round edges on there and if we want to we can add a box shadow to this so it makes it look like it stands off the page again we can easily come in and tweak this and adjust the colors, adjust the distance and so on. So we can just fine tune and tweak this to make it quite subtle. All looks pretty nice. If you want that kind of Mac look to it, you can do that very easily. Then you've got the responsive options. So you can see we can go through and we can specify whether you want to hide this on a desktop, tablet or mobile. And finally, we've got the option then for custom CSS. If we wanted to style certain elements in this ourselves, we can do that. And we can use the things like the, uh, the form IDs and so on to really go in and fine tune this. So like under different options, we've got the different ability to go in and specify different CSS IDs, which we can then target. I'm not going to worry about that. So we've gone through, we've set up the basics, we've fine tuned, we've tweaked, we've adjusted things on this. Let's hit save now. So we've set all the parameters up on this. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up a browser and we're going to take a look at how this works. Okay, so this is our basic form now, all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to refresh the page so we can see how the entrance animation works. So we'll just refresh that. And there's our animation. As you can see, it slides in like we set it up to be. So all the things we've gone through and tweaked and configured have all been set up in there. And we've now got it set up to go through and go through to into my account page. So let's just log in. So I'm just going to log in with my normal details on there just to test it out. We'll hit log in and that'll immediately then take us through to the account page. All very simple and straightforward, but it really does give you a quick and easy way to create custom layout login pages for your site, which can then really make sure that they fit in exactly how you want them to into the design. Well, that's all there is to it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up on the video and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content. If you have any comments, questions or feedback, please leave those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.